Uh, today's passage is Acts chapter 3, verses 11 to 26. This is the aftermath of the miracle where the lame man was healed on the temple steps. And loads of people were rushing into the area. They had heard what had gone on, rumours of something amazing happening. And so they flocked in. And so Peter stands up and addresses the crowd. Now the thing that strikes me when I read this is that Peter actually barely mentions the miracle. He starts off with a bit of a disclaimer. Hey, this wasn't us guys, this was God. Then he mentions it one more time to say it was faith in the name of Jesus that healed this man. <clears throat> but what he does is he goes on to deliver a really hard-hitting, no-holds-barred gospel message. I mean, it was so hard-hitting, they ended up all before the courts. Do you see, for Peter, that miracle was just a springboard for the gospel. Or a word we might often use is a sign. The miracle was a sign. And I just wonder if, you know, these days, uh, this may sound a little bit cynical, but, you know, sometimes you, when, when miracles like this happen, before long there's... You know, book deals and TV programmes and international conferences and ministry tours. And, you know, I've, we've seen it happen. And sometimes that's a good thing. But sometimes what's happened is we've become over-focused on the signs and lost what the signs are pointing towards. You see, signs are important. Uh, Whenever we're travelling home from, from, say, visiting family or being on holiday, you're coming up the M6 and you, you see the sign, Liverpool, 54 miles, Liverpool, M62 West. It's exciting because you know that you're nearly home. That's what the signs are telling you. They're telling you you're on your way to our glorious city. They're pointing to a destination. But wouldn't it be ridiculous if we stopped at one of those signs, pulled over, unloaded the car, got out, sat down and said, ah, here we are at last. It'd be dangerous as well, uh, but it'd be ridiculous. But because things like miracles and, and, and the supernatural, they can be so exciting, sometimes we can seek those things almost for themselves. Uh, and we can get distracted by them because they're just so different and unique. But the point is, the church, our role is, is to reveal God to the world, to reveal God's glory to the world. And that's what the bar says, is that we are being transformed from glory into ever-increasing glory by Jesus himself, so that we can display that glory to the world, so that people can come to him. And sometimes, you know, we might think, oh, if only we had more of the miraculous, more of the supernatural, more people come to know Jesus, because... They'd be so impressed by this power. Well, there's more than one sign. Yes, the miraculous is a sign. But you know, social action can be a sign. In some ways, perhaps even a more powerful one in this day and age. You know, helping the poor, standing up for injustice. Simple acts of kindness. Standing up for righteousness. And what often follows from that is persecution. And many people uh, have seen the jailers and torturers come to faith because of their witness and the persecution. Jesus himself told Peter how he would die. And what he says is he told him what manner of death he would glorify God with. Is what he says in John's Gospel. How we treat other people can also be a sign. And I think particularly in terms of marriage, because our marriages, the Bible says, are prophetic. They're a sign of Jesus' relationship with the church. And so in our marriages, are we speaking well of our spouse? Or are we joining in with those conversations uh, where we just casually speak ill of our spouses? Oh, my stupid, incapable husband. Or, oh, the old trouble and strife. Do we flirt? Do we, again, casually talk about which celebrities we fancy? And you might think that's all harmless fun until you remember 
that our marriages are symbolic, they're a sign of Jesus' relationship with the church. And so what I think is important here and what I'm learning from reading this passage is that we don't focus on the signs. Just like Peter didn't focus on the miracle, he focused on using the miracle as a springboard for the gospel. So let us as individuals and as the church focus on not seeking for signs but seeking God's glory to be revealed in us and through us. And I think as we do that, God knows best which signs people will follow to find him. And so let's just seek God. Let's just seek his glory. And I think as we do that, his glory will be revealed in us. There will be all manner of signs and wonders. And people will come to know him just like they did in this story, as you'll hear more about tomorrow.